All right, so I'm going to go over the film notes that you're going to need for the entire semester. Make sure that you're taking extensive notes because these will be uh, the primary notes that we refer back to over and over and over again with each movie that we watch. I won't go back to these notes and go back over the notes as we watch the movies. I'll just refer back to them and expect that you have them. I'll have a couple tests that relate back to the notes, and then there'll be a uh, little crash course that we do on all kinds of the history and background and some more term terminology of film after this. But these are our primary notes, so take great notes. Um, just a couple quotes. Uh, you know, again, we want to look at film in a unique way. So as you, feel, as you view a film, we want you to pay attention to the areas we consider important and to draw conclusions from your experience with the film. That's the goal of this class, really. And only then does a passive viewer, somebody who just, you know, okay, the movie's there, I'm kind of paying attention to it, become an active. Like you're engaged with it and you're paying attention to all the things that are happening, the symbolism, the screen, um, the way that things are shot, the lighting, the sound. And uh, you think about the film's content, and that becomes interactive. And that's when you're interacting with the film. Um, and again, film is a medium which cuts across diversities of ability, background, and communication. It's diverse, right? When film is integrated into our class, it touches upon all kinds of skill areas, not just passively watching a movie. I included these two quotes to remind you that this isn't just a class where you watch movies. We actively watch movies, and you're going to have responses that tie back into them, and you're going to utilize the notes that are coming up to try and answer questions um, and write you know, short responses, essays, or what, do projects or whatever as we go through the class. So again, the notes are important. All right, shots and framing. I'm not going to read every word of these uh, slides to you, and some have videos embedded into them, but I will go through them. So remember, a shot is a single piece of film uninterrupted by cuts, so you're not going to have breaks in it. An establishing shot is a kind of shot. Uh, it could be a long shot or a series of shots that sets a scene, and it's used to establish setting. Highlight, underline, circle that word. It's used to establish setting, right? That's important. And to show transitions between locations. So if you were watching the Of Mice and Men movie for the book that you read of Mice and Men freshman year, the establishing shot for that is on a train and it's in the middle of a field. And then part of that is also them running away in a field from dogs and the woman that um, Lenny attacked. So they, they really want you to know, like, here's where this is taking place, whether it's a time period or a location. A long shot is a shot from far away. It probably will give you more of the setting, right? Uh, it'll, it shows the isolation of a place, like if you're you know, shooting in Alaska, or the vulnerability of a character. If you were watching a movie about, let's just say, penguins or whatever, they might take a shot from far, far away to show you how uh, open the land is and how really subject to the uh, environment they are and how open they are to having something happen to them. A shot taken, it's a shot that's taken from a long distance to show a landscape, building, or a large crowd. Also called a full shot. So put full shot there with long shot. It can serve to show distance or separation between characters. You know, the further the shot away, the more distance you can show between people. It can show that a character is integrated or alienated from their surroundings. So like if you took a shot from down, a long shot downtown and showed a tiny little person next to a skyscraper, it could show how insignificant they are. Um, or if it's far enough away, it'll leave details out and leave the objects that are around it indistinct, right? Because you're, you're blurring things out because you're at a distance. There's several different long shots for you to look at. Again, you know, here you see how small the person is with all the mountains and the snow and all that. Um, how small this bus is with the landscape and uh, all the shots are, are really showing, again, how kind of insignificant people are with their surroundings. A medium shot is the most common shot, right, that you're going to use in a movie. The camera seems to be a medium distance from the object being filmed, and it really shows the person from their waist up, as you can see with Titanic here and with Divergent here. It's exactly what the definition is. So we're going to take awesome notes. All right, moving on. Oops, my bad. A close-up, well, is literally close-up. You see that with the shining there. Um, when he says, hey, Johnny, uh, that shot is about 80% of the frame. Write that number down in case it shows up on a test. All right, an extreme close-up 
would be like you see here with the watch trying to show the time or something that serves another purpose like the reaction on someone's face. So the extreme close-up is one of the less commonly used shots in a film, right? It could be super awkward, uh, but when it's utilized correctly, it can be extremely powerful. The most well-known example of this is from the good, the bad, and the ugly, which is this shot right here. Let's play a couple seconds of it so you can see. And again, you're like, you're kind of getting the <laughs> the reactions is like, oh, this is how they're feeling or whatever. So, cool. All right, next slide. Oh, my, sorry. Um, a two shot is a scene between two people. So, like in the graduate here, you see that there's a re like this is the end of the graduate if you've never seen it, and it's there's really a point to the expressions on their face. They both need to be together in the scene. Uh, to show how they're feeling. Uh, it's a scene when two people are shot exclusively from an angle that has both characters equally in the shot, right? Uh, it's used a lot in love scenes to show the two people are together or they're in love, like Fault in Our Stars or whatever. A pan is a stationary camera, and you can kind of see them acting that out down here, where a camera that's posted on something moves from side to side in a horizontal axis. A tilt, I'll put a couple of definitions here on one page, guys, because we got a lot. A tilt is a stationary camera that moves up and down along a vertical axis. A uh, camera angle that's eye level is a shot taken from a normal height, meaning someone's eye level. That is the character's eye level, kind of uh, basic definition, right? Uh, 90 to 95% of the shots that are seen are eye level because it's the most natural angle. So eye level shots are pretty much the most common. A high angle, where you can see Thor looking up, um, the camera is above the subject, and it has the effect of making the subject look smaller than normal, giving him or her the appearance of being weak, powerless, or trapped, like a giant's about to squish them. And again, get this in your notes, guys. A low angle is trying to do the opposite, right? The camera films the subject from below, showing that the people above are looking at you like a little ant that they're gonna squish. Uh, and it has the effect of making the subject look larger than normal, as you can see in uh, both, I feel it's Men in Black and Home Alone. So again, they're like intimidating. A zoom is a stationary camera where the lens moves to make an object seem to move closer to or further away from the camera. Again, zooming up. You know what that is. You guys use cameras all the time. Uh, but this technique, moving into a character, is often a personal revealing moment while moving away separates you from the character. And again, I'm just going to play a quick scene of a couple different types of shots like that. And they're zooming in for, <laughs> for reaction or whatever. Um, And again, you know, it's pretty, pretty obvious, but a lot of times it's like, oh, this is the reaction. All right, can move on to the next slide. Um, dolly slash tracking is a term that describes that the camera's on a track, right? It's a little track like you see in the top picture that allows it to move with the action. It also refers to any camera mounted on a car, truck, or helicopter. Um, not too long ago, they were filming Shameless out here, and uh, they had a car driving down LaGrange with a car, a truck, really, with a car on the back of the truck, and it was the uh, main character, uh, Gallagher, from the movie, sitting in a car that had no windows or anything like that, and they were filming as it moved. So that's a kind of a form of that. Uh, a boom crane is the camera that's on a crane, over the action, right? So you don't need to get a shot from above. A lot of times nowadays they use drones for things like that too, uh, but this is, you know, the old schooly way to do that. All right, I'm gonna do one more slide, then I'll take a pause for our next notes. So I'll, I'll start the next notes with uh, lighting. So again, we're gonna switch gears here, guys. I'm gonna pause where we're at, and then lighting will be the next part of your notes. Thank you for taking awesome notes, and see you on the flip side.